Hey, welcome everyone. It's Ken Bergen here from Silverchef and uh, thanks for coming along. We've had a really big uh, response to this uh, menu webinar. I think it's just one of those very central and basic uh, items in our cafe or a restaurant that we just, uh, well, we don't have to get it right, but uh, if we put a little bit of work and the thought into it, uh, it's certainly going to um, give us a very big payoff. We've got uh, some great people here to help us today. And I've also got a poll that I'd like everyone just to jump onto. And uh, there's a few questions there, just really about your experience. Uh, Emma, someone's got some paper going. Oh, Emma, yeah. Um, your experience as a consumer. We've got people here, quite a lot of people who are restaurant owners or cafe owners. We've got other people who are consultants or teachers, but let's all step back into the consumer mode. And uh, if you could just give me some answers and then I'll end the, finish up the poll and we'll have a look at what the results are. Okay. So this is going to be recorded and I'm going to just pause for a second and start formally. Uh, welcome everyone. So that'll be in the recording, which will be available on Monday for you. Welcome everyone. It's Ken Bergen here from Silver Chef. Uh, an important topic today, smart and profitable menu design. Uh, you don't have to uh, redesign your menu, but uh, I want to show you lots of ways uh, that you can do that um, and to get customers spending a little bit more um, to emphasize the high profit margin items and uh, generally make this a really powerful sales document. Of course, it's no longer a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard. It's now on a screen, it's on a kiosk, it's on a phone. And we're gonna be looking at some examples of how that works. Just uh, for navigating around the webinar today, don't forget uh, you've got the chat there. And I wouldn't mind if people could just uh, click on the chat on your control panel. You'll see that black control panel you've got. Um, and if you'd like to just say uh, where you're from and uh, say hello, so I can see that that's working. Just a disclaimer, just uh, reminding you that uh, you're of course responsible for anything you do out of this uh, wonderful information that we give you. There we are, got people from Canberra, Melbourne. Uh, thank you, Aubrey, Grafton, nice. Okay, so just a few reminders around webinars. Um, take notes, you know what happens when you hear good ideas and you think, oh, that's fantastic. And then three minutes later, you can't remember what, what you remembered. So just scribble it down or, you know, if you've got your phone, send yourself an email or however you take notes, that's important. We'll be dropping some links into the chat. Another reason to keep an eye on the chat. So um, you can click on those. Um, we've got some useful resources there. Any particular questions, drop those into the uh, Q and A. Uh, you'll see that's a separate uh, link there. I'd really be interested to see any uh, links that people have got to their own menus, or maybe you've been somewhere recently and you saw, you know, what you thought was a clever menu, well-designed menu. Um, drop those in the chat as well, and that's where everyone can see it. So. Obviously, just drop a, the, a link to the um, business website. We've got the poll happening here, and that re last reminder, of course, being um, hospitality people, you've got so much patience. Um, so I'll trust you with that one. So, just a quick intro now to our guests, and you'll see them in the video uh, screen as well. Um, I'm Ken Bergen, been working with Silver Chef for about four years now. Um, used to have my own business consulting and uh, a few years before that, cafe and restaurant in Sydney. Uh, love the industry and always looking for ways to help people uh, make a bit more money and do it a little bit easier. Um, really a great privilege to have Anna Nguyen here from I Love Fur. Um, very successful restaurant on the north side of Sydney and Emma, has kindly agreed to share some analysis of her menu and how she um, makes it work so well. So we're going to look at some of her menu pages and she's got some figures to show us. And she was really, um, in the last, well, let's say the last four or five months, people have really dived into online menus and apps and uh, takeout ordering in a much more enthusiastic way. But she was, uh, I'd say, one of the pioneers of this and just got a lot of good stuff to tell us. 
Jose and Tyrone, um, two good colleagues of ours, um, both offering menu systems, um, ordering systems through kiosk or phone or website. And they're able to give us a kind of helicopter view of what smart operators are doing um, that they work with too. Because that's what we want to hear. What are the clever people doing? We see enough people making mistakes. We want to hear about the clever ones. Anyway, um, just an offer for you as well. Um, if you, like I said before, if you see uh, any interesting um, menus or if you've seen any, if you want to drop those links into the chat would be great. Um, but also if you want menu feedback after the webinar, because I'm going to bombard you with a fair bit of information, um, also ask for that in the chat and I'll track your contact details down from your webinar registration, get in touch. And uh, usually I do a kind of a five minute recording. I'll just kind of look at your menu and give you feedback and it's all part of today. No charge for that. I'd be very happy to help you with it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first up is I wanna dive into some menu basics. Now this apply, menu design basics. This applies to uh, whether it's on a phone, whether it's on a kiosk or traditionally on a paper and some of the things we need to think about that. So one of them is actually this, the P word, profit. What do we actually mean by that? And even that people get a bit confused. So I've got two items here for sale. Now I haven't included GST and I'm just not taking that into account to keep the calculation simple. But of course, looking at that coffee, we don't actually get $4, we get about $3.60. So don't forget when you're doing your, your profit calculations to uh, you know be honest about what the sale price is. But you can see two items here, um, one selling for $18, one selling for $4. And uh, we could say, well, our profit margin on the left uh, is 10%, uh, sorry, our cost is 10%, our profit margin is 90%, which is pretty attractive. On the right, it's um, our profit margin is only 67%. And many of the time I've said to people, which one's more profitable? And they'll say, oh, the hot pot, of course. No, sorry, they'll say the coffee, of course, because the cost percentage is much lower. Well, that's cool, except which one is going to pay more of the rent? Which one's going to pay more of the wages? This is, I'm not trying to teach you simple stuff here, folks, but it's amazing how many people forget about the gross profit margin. It's the dollars you make on items that are going to make you successful or not. So just a little reminder and look with all of this kind of stuff, please teach the chef, teach the staff because they work hard, probably didn't like maths much at school and they need to know some of this stuff as well. I want to go, now go through some design principles as well. And don't forget uh, if you've got any um, questions and answers, if you would like to just drop those in our Q and A as we're going along as well. Actually, before I dive into that next part uh, on design, I might just have a look at the poll and we'll close that off and see what the results are from that. Okay, so finishing the poll and let's have a look at the results here. So questions, uh, um, how often are we seeing apps, be, uh, menus being offered on apps or phones occasionally? So not too often. Uh, do you see menus being sanitized or removed for use from use for COVID safety reasons? Um, hardly ever. It's my experience as well. It's like a lot of places, really. COVID crisis? What COVID crisis? They know, they know business is down, but they haven't changed their behaviour very much. Um, so here, interesting question um, for people ordering takeaway. Um, so majority, no, slightly more people using other apps rather than Uber Eats, Deliveroo, et cetera. Um, and looks like the experience, yeah, it's pretty mixed there. Easy to use, um, but not a lot of add-on sales being done with it. Okay, so we can just keep, think about those kind of survey results as we're going through our content today. Okay, now I've got uh, my kind of 10 top design trips for, tips for menus, which I want to go through with you. 
Um, if you've got any feedback, drop it into the chat. That'd be interesting to hear. But we're going to use that when we talk to Emma about her menu and uh, how she you know, designs menus and looks at profit margins. So a few things just on menu layout. A typical A4 page, um, the most common menu design and certainly the cheapest to produce if you're printing. And this, you're thinking, well, which part do we put where? Well, the items that are going to be the most profitable should be getting the prime real estate. And what it's important to think about is this is usually how the eye travels. So obviously the no meat, no gluten um, is probably an important part of your menu, but it's probably a small part. You know, chicken and beef, usually the biggest sellers. So let's give them prime real estate. The seafood, certainly profitable, maybe not as uh, a higher seller. But just remember that, you know, sections and where you put things, everything like that is influential. And if you've got a menu that you can move things around, just test and see how it influences your sales. Uh, columns is important. So here's a rather um, hard to read layout on a page and we've all seen plenty of these and you're reading and reading and thinking, you know, again, you're not consciously reacting to it, but it's just hard work, a menu like that. Whereas if it was rewritten with two columns like this, notice straight away, easier to read, easier to scan. And there's an important difference. See, and uh, the men can uh, decide whether this is true or not, but it's been said that Men scan a menu and women read a menu. It's true or not? I don't know. Drop it in the chat if you like, if you agree or not. But what we need is a menu that can be scanned and read. So that's the importance of, of sections. So uh, Helena says, absolutely, yes. Hell yes. Good. <laughs> but, but, you know, we've got both, you know, we've got lots of people. So we've got to have menus that are easy to scan, meaning headings and someone wants to read all about how it's made, there's something good for them as well. Currency um, signs and price endings. I really will bang on about this a lot whenever I'm asked. <laughs> $9 or $9.80, what are we gonna sell things for? You know, I see so many places, they have what I call flat pricing. It's just a nine, there's no dollar sign or anything like that, it's just a nine. But if you sold 100 of those for 980 instead of $9, hey, I need that 80 cents. That's paid someone's wages for the whole night. Okay, so anyway, sometimes people say, oh, it's a design thing. Well, let's put design second and let's put profitability first. But I think it's a pretty important thing to consider and an easy win in the next few days if you wanted to have a bit of a reprint or uh, you know, redo what's on your screen. Uh, next. And, and here's an example of that. And I actually did some calculations around that and I saw a full 5% improvement just in sales, just by changing price endings. Okay, and you can decide, does the consumer think that $9.80 is the same as nine? Well, certainly there's lots of retailers who work off those, um, that approach as well. Anyway, I think that's an e a very easy win. Probably one of the easiest wins you could make um, with uh, these, me with menu changes. Another simple one is just highlighting specials. Now, I just put a couple of stars there, but you could put them in a box or you might put a little symbol beside it or something like that. Just by drawing attention to something, you will sell more of them. So which ones will I draw attention to? Um, Maybe it's some kind of special that you're enthusiastic about, but I'd love to think that the ones you draw attention to are the ones that are the most profitable, the ones that have the best gross profit margin. Okay, and that's why something even like a seafood platter, which if you do it on your menu, you know, can be a very expensive item, it might be $85, might be $125. And if you did the percentage of that with, you know, a half lobster and all sorts of expensive seafood, you might think, wow, that's too high with a percentage wise, but the dollar profit margin on that is considerable. Anyway, that's the reason why we do some highlighting, however you do that. And again, there's sort of ways to do that with 
uh, new digital menus. It's easy to do on print menus and we've got some new ways to look at. Here's another interesting one. I don't know if you've tried this, uh, a decoy price. Notice that we've got a price range there uh, that's pretty even, you know, the entrees are in the eight to 12, the main courses between 18 and 22. Now notice as soon as we drop that $29 price at the bottom, what does it do to all the main course prices? It makes them look a little more reasonable. Now, whether you sell a lot of that $29 one, and you will sell some, but whether you sell a lot of them, that's not the point. The point is to play with people's heads and uh, reconsider you know, the pricing of, uh, and the value of the other items on the menu. Nested pricing is also something that can work well. Notice how we've kind of on the right hand side, we've got the prices down the right, kind of like a hardware catalog. And on the left, we've just kind of tucked them at the end of each line. We can't, we're not hiding prices, but we're not making them in kind of the number one most important thing. We want people looking at the left hand side of the menu where the description is not getting stuck on what's on the right hand side. So that's a simple thing to change as well. Uh, this, is, this is a fun one to do and look at your menu and see if you can um, just kind of change it from black and white into colour. Um, what are some simple, tasty words that you could add to description? You know, not just um, fried fish and chips, but golden fried fish and chips or crispy golden fried fish and chips. Now, don't go crazy and don't hype it up. Well, you can if you want to, but it's really easy to add some simple words. And actually, when we look at um, Emma's menu shortly, you'll see how she's very nicely incorporated that. We want people going yum, not just, you know, oh, I'm hungry, I better have something to eat. This is the way people will spend a little more on something that is a little more interesting. I think this is an easy win. I think this is something I often see menus are still a little bit like black and white TV rather than colour. Here's an example. Um, you know, Flathead's a beautiful fried fish. Interestingly, well, sadly, we haven't got too many tourists around at the minute, but if you've got tourists, people don't know what a flathead is. It sounds like a deformity. So make sure <laughs> if you do a flathead, you tell them that it's fish. But you can see the difference between what's on the left and what's on the right. And our last of our design tips here is this is quite an important one, really. In a section, the item that's first in a section or last, especially the first, will sell more just because of its position. Okay, so don't go putting things just in price order from cheapest to most expensive. Uh, think about, you know, if the garlic mussels is, we make the most dollar profit, put it first. Okay, and maybe the chili prawns, even though it's twelve ninety five, but the cost to putting them on the plate and the gross profit on them might be less. So just moving those things around also makes a difference. So I've got another poll for you. Um, and happy, you know, really interested to get any questions about uh, these design principles or drop some comments in the, the chat if you want to. But I've got another poll because I'd like to, again, you as consumers, what kind of menu weak, you know, we've looked at menu strength, but that's highlighting a lot of menu weakness that we see around. Um, let's have a look at this poll and think about you when you dine out, when you look at menus, if you're a restaurant or cafe owner, think about your own menu. And just um, let's have a look at, you know, what do you see some of the main weaknesses? And you can choose more than one. It's just one question we've got here. Be really interested to see uh, what some of the, sh the weaknesses you see in the menus that you look at, whether it's around descriptions or pricing, too many words, um, to no, no nice descriptions. <clears throat> okay, interesting to see the results coming in.
And in a minute, <clears throat> once we um, talking to Jose and Tyrone as well about digital menus, it'd be interesting to get their feedback on how many of these design principles can be applied in that that way as well. Okay, so just uh, just uh, ten more seconds, and then we'll I'll show you the results. Anyone else wants to vote? And we're voting as consumers here, not just as uh, restaurateurs. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Let's have a look at uh, the results. Okay, so it's pretty much across the board, all the weaknesses. Um, the flat dollar pricing may be not as much of a problem in most situations. Um, too many words and hard to read seems to be the top one. Um, okay. So interesting, you can take that on board. Now, don't forget, uh, I've given you a lot of information here in these 10 principles. When uh, I send out the replay on Monday of the webinar, I'll also include a PDF of the uh, all the slides as well. So you can go through those in your own time also. Okay. Now, just one picture here, I just want to, um, alert you to. Uh, this is, I guess, in a typical food court situation. And this is where we see menu design principles applied. Uh, to me, <coughs> most of what's important here, I mean, the same things around easy to read and headings and descriptions. Oftentimes they'll use pictures as well, but people scan very quickly and words have to grab the attention very quickly as well. There's often, a, you know, you can see the screen, that one, um, create your own on the right. To me, that looks way too busy for anyone to pay attention. Usually they're looking down at the person or what's in the counter rather than up. So I don't know about you. I think this one's a little bit busy, but um, hopefully they can change it around. And of course, you've got flexibility with this sort of design work that you can keep changing any time you want to. Okay. So real life experience before we dive into uh, talking to Emma about her menu is I went to dinner last night at an Indian restaurant that I really like. And uh, I've been there quite a bit. That's a white tablecloth underneath that. It's, the pictures looks a bit cream, but it's very comfortable and it's, the food's great and the service is always very friendly. Um, hadn't been sitting down there since um, uh, back in about February, you know, before all the drama and no menus just that in the middle of the table there and so it was like oh wow okay so i pulled my phone out um and boom straight up came the menu and you can do the same actually on the screen if you want to you can see what what comes up um but i've ordered takeaway from this place um and the menu looked pretty much the same on the um on my phone when it came up, but basically they've just swapped over to its menus on phones only now. When it came to dessert time at the end, they did bring a small laminated card around, but most of the heavy lifting with the menus is being done with this. And so QR codes now absolutely have to be, you know, part of our, our kit and part of the way we set things up. So let's now look, um, talk to our guest, Emma Nguyen from I Love Fur in Sydney, uh, on the Sydney's North Shore, a wonderful restaurant, a wonderful operator, and it's a real pleasure to have you here today, Emma, and thanks for joining us and sharing about um, your restaurant. Just tell us a bit about the restaurant, um, the style of menu, yeah, what's, what's your thinking behind it? Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Ken, for letting me be part of the, the webinar today. Uh, today. Um, so a bit about myself, I have the Vietnamese restaurant in process for already almost nine years. Um, and um, this has been a good change for me from corporate to being a restauranter because I've been very enjoy it. Um, and I also have the uh, Chow Catering which is serve the corporate client for all the restaurant food. Um, so today I would like to share with um, all of us here of how the takeaway menu have been changed from the past couple of years until today, you know, how it, how it was a tiny little extra income become a main part of the income. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So this is, I think, now what I might do is just go, I just took some screenshots from your website where we've got some of them are the takeaway menu and some of them are the sit down. So I think this one's from the takeaway, is that right? Or is this the sit down? Um, so this is the dine-in uh, dine menu. Okay. Okay, now notice everyone, now that you're all kind of keyed up on menu design principles, you notice if, what are some of the, the, the words or the descriptions or the things around pricing? You want to, anyone want to drop stuff in, in chat about what, you know, what are you noticing there? Um, Jose, you, you can kick off for us. Well, what are you noticing some of the, the design principles that are being followed there? Most definitely descriptive words. I'm uh -huh. We're just salivating reading them, so... Yeah, okay. Crispy chicken wing, caramelised fish sauce. Uh, now, I love this one, light crispy batter. This is telling me that even though it's fried, it's okay. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the idea about the menu is like, um, is appetising you when you look at the picture. Uh, rather than reading the description and the price, you say, oh yeah, I want that. And then yeah. you just, once you decide that, you know, your mind already said, this is what I want. So it doesn't matter what you write and how much it is. Yeah, but you only right. have enough the information. So when they read it, they're just more confirming, yes, definitely this is what I want. Yeah. Um, so, um, and also that the uh, the description word is just to make you feel a lot more appetite. Yes, I want to eat it rather yeah, than yeah, yeah. boring ingredients. I want all of it. <laughs> okay, now you've got um, signature dish. Uh, no, also, notice up the top there, entrees to share. So what's this saying? We don't do like, this is not small entrees. This is like entrees to share. Is this, Emma, is it the thinking here to kind of get people to order the, basically like the large size or something? Um, no, the, the idea here is to make the, peop the person feel not too guilty to order you know yeah, if you go good. with another okay. one you say yeah, yeah. how about you and me share this so then the cost 24 suddenly become 12 dollars yeah nice four. i like that yeah. that makes sense thanks and thanks uh, the other one is the the images there ken are great yeah. right? look at look at that and you know, you see yeah, the source you yeah, see yeah. Some so what's the story um, with photos emma do you get a professional in what once a year to do your photo or do you um, do them yourself or how does it work so my menu is the uh, investment. So in terms of design, photos, and layout, mm -hmm. um, but the, the concept about um, all the images is like flat laying uh, with mm -hmm. multiple dish. So when people look at it, they forget about the menu. They're looking at the dinner mm -hmm. on the table and then, oh, this is what I want. This is what I want. And at the same time, the person sitting next to them can share and look, oh, how about that? So yeah. you take them away from the focus of, okay, what are we going to have, how much we have to spend, mm. but rather than, oh, I want this, I want that, how about we share that? So the image has to be a real size, um, the real ingredient, and also is plating it complement to each other. Okay, should I have shaking bit, or I have a crispy pot belly, or even with the salt paper before, I have all different five types, because straight away, they know, okay, I don't want prawn, I can have squid. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm vegetarian, I can have tofu and eggplant mm -hmm. rather than go and look in the description of oh, how many options do I have? And then, yeah. you know, yeah. I love this description you mentioned about, you know, vegetarian, you know, love green veggies, not vegetarian menu. Because I always think vegetarian menu always sounds like, you know, the, it's a bit of a sentence, isn't it? You know, it was like the stuff without the flavour. But this is, you know, this is like a celebration. <laughs> Uh, Bronwyn's asking yeah. here, is this just the online menu or does it look like this in the restaurant and how large is the document? So this is the A4 side dine-in uh, okay. menu in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. But when I do the online menu for takeaway, it's the same image. Um, so right. online and dine-in is very consistent, but because with the online, depending on you know, the platform that we use, we have to follow. So we just use individual dish. But right. the same description and same concept. Yeah. Okay, so when you pull this up on on your phone, it's going to look, um, it's going to it'll just be individual dishes rather than the. It the, is going to be all individual. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Ken, nice. Ken, there's another question. Yeah. How does sharing work with COVID issues? Okay. Yeah. What's your thoughts, Emma, on that? Uh, how do you mean sharing, as in um, on the dine-in or for the takeaway? 
I think it was. I think that answer, that question was dropped in around the entrees, the appetizers. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah, so when you um, <laughs> yeah. So this menu was a while ago, and it's still ongoing. But with the COVID, when you sit on the same table, you're already considered as the the family or a same group. But then people more cautious about it, then you can only order separate dish, a uh, single entree, because there's a, another section on my menu, it's just individual entree dish. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, yeah, um, Bronwyn's made a good point there to your bubble. You can share if you want to, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Um, I think this is the last page of God of your menus. So uh, tell us about... Now this is, this is a takeaway one, I think, is it? Or is this sit down as well? It's still, it's still a sit down. Um, mm -hmm. So with a sit down menu, follow with the concept that you mentioned. Uh, it makes it easy for people to navigate it. Uh, you have uh, entree and then you want to sell your main, which is where your most profit margin and the mm -hmm. biggest sales. There's going to the second part. And then any other option of meat choice, vegetable choice is following after that. Um, yes. Even though my signature dish is pho, which is the Vietnamese noodle, but I won't put it on the, the front page of the noodle, of the menu. It okay. will be right after all the entree, the main. And then I have um, Why is that? salads, noodles. Why? Because if someone comes and exactly what they want, they will just go straight to the section that they want to order. Okay. Um, but majority of people coming in with their family or friend, they like to browse through. And um, it's just the impression of, you know, the first thing that go that you see is the is you more kind of you know uh, wanted to get that dish, and that's yeah. the best that you want to put it up first. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that's also a good strategy too, because because uh, well, Emma's a bit of an institution in North Sydney. People know her for her phone. so if you're going to yeah. have pho, you know where to go and get it. But I think uh -huh. what we're going to do is look. We're more than pho. Why don't you look at the other stuff that we can provide? And then at the end of the day, if you want pho, of course, we're going to do pho for you. But here's an opportunity to see what else we can do. Mm -hmm. mm, interesting. Tyrone, any other observations? You're, this is sort of a new menu for you. What are you noticing here? Um, lots, of, lots of trying to highlight uh, vegetarian or, or gluten-free options and, mm, and things mm -hmm. like that, which, which is good. Uh, I mean, it's, it's becoming more and more prevalent these days. Um, and just the uh, the little options to to kind of upsell, so salt and pepper, or yeah. sort of calamari. Oh, you want prawns? Yeah, cool. Knock yourself out. It's actually two bucks. Like, yeah. Um, all those little additions, similar to what you were saying earlier, Ken, about you know the the hot pot versus the coffee. You, you should, all the little incremental gains you, <laughs> you can make help mm -hmm. yep. pay the rent, right? <laughs> so yeah, this is what. You... Yeah, Emma, go on. Go on. Oh yeah, we're just saying, I follow that point. So for example, salt and paper sweet. Um, so we have the menu 23, but then for someone that just want it for themselves, there's an option for entree. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also when you look at, okay, it's only 1590, but then you look at the option, you say, actually, I love prawn. So extra $2 is normally, it's just nothing. But mm, when yeah. you put 1790, it's another, the step to think of, but $2 mm -hmm. extra, that's fine. Everyone can just yeah. do it. Mm. So helping them to making a better, smoother decision making. Mm. I like it. So, so, so now there's, you... there's a question here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this is the menu on individual pages or is it some form of book? And what would you recommend? It, um, so with the menu I have, because there's many dish and I have a vegan menu as a separate mm. uh, section. So it is the A4 book, but it's designed on the um, open page of two A4. So it's actually A3 landscape. So when you see you on the right, um, one side will be all image with the number reference. So then you want people to shop by a picture, look at the dish. I'm talking about dine now. And then mm. after that, they can reference to the right and see, mm -hmm. You know, description, options, and price. Um, so even on the first two pay will be entree to share and entree by itself. But at the same time, they both see all the options. And then the next pay will be two page is men. And then the next pay is two page of one page is noodle and one page is salad. Mm -hmm. 
So it's kind of continuous uh, and easy to compare rather than suddenly you cut half of the menu and then move to the next one. Mm. You will have to turn left and right to keep looking on that picture in reference with this. So you want everything just in one um, eye view and then you can just see it. Yeah. Right, nice. Do, yeah. do you print those yourself, Emma? Like, or do you have to get them? Sorry? Printed? Do you print them yourself? Like, do you have a good printer at the restaurant? Or... Um, so this menu is um, was print on kind of the not the laminate, you know, this not waterproof menu page. So we can actually sanitize and wipe and waterproof, and it doesn't worn out very quickly. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, it can be easily print by um, a printing shop, not by myself. But it's easy to change and update because right. of soft copy. If we need an update, we just reprint, and the the menu is kind of the by default. So you can just insert it in. Uh -huh. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Now, man, Emma's got some numbers. She's kindly, uh, it's pretty unusual for restaurateurs to be uh, open about their numbers. And she's kind of. You want to show the uh, other. Yeah, the, the yeah next let's have a look at this one first. So, you've, um, so this shows the, the state of your business more generally, I think. Is that right? So, with, um, so I thought it's easier to kind of break it out to the chart. With um, takeaway uh, before COVID, um, it's about 40 to 45 percent of my total revenues um, and when you know COVID-19 happened we got shut down in terms of no customer and and you kind of cannot the only way you can deliver is to go delivery and online so luckily at the time we already had all our online available in all different platforms but mm -hmm. then it's just the time to think and say okay I don't have, have a chance to interact with my customer the only way the customer can find me and order and communicate with me is the online order so uh, the focus is shift into how can i make this takeaway menu better i mean it has always been purposely designed for easy to look and easy to order but mm -hmm. then now that the whole uh, business income stream is shut the only way is the takeaway so i look at that to improve and um after the three weeks of the COVID, on the third week, our takeaway menu, so our takeaway sale become 54% of the total revenue. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and during this lockdown, there's no, uh, when I say dinner and lunch there, I mean people walk past the shop to order by walk past, by telephone, uh, directly, but not online. So 54% right. is online order through all different platforms. Uh -huh. um, so and here that just the right go on. Yeah, so if you go back to the the first mm -hmm. one, the, the so it was fifty four percent of the takeaway, and now that we uh, reopen to ten customer and twenty customer, the takeaway is still maintaining at that value but it's come down to 45 percent okay it's mean that uh -huh. in a way uh right now what i'm doing is better than before COVID. right okay um so i'm interested in the in the figures look, here you've got i'm um, just looking at that second block of figures here you've got add-on takeaway are you tracking that as a separate kind of the add-ons as a separate line item there um, yep, so here is uh, to break down uh, how can we boost our takeaway sale because now it's the main part of the income. Mm. Um, if takeaway by itself is already 54%, how can we upsell? How can we increase the frequency? How can we increase the order sale amount? Mm -hmm. um, but same, same logic as when we serve the dine-in customer. We want to extra drink. Um, add on extra complement dish that go complement with the dish that they order or should we create a combo suggestion? Mm -hmm. um, so how I look at it is how can I train my online menu work as the perfect virtual stuff, you know? Um, right. Uh -huh. So yeah. for, I put myself as a customer. If I want to order and I look at the online menu, I kind of have no help and support. I don't know who to ask and how big it is, what is a good width, or should I order something else? Because once the food is ordered and delivered to home, you're kind of too late to make any change. You're not yeah, sitting in uh -huh. the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So on the menu online, I'm talking about Uber, Deliveroo, and my direct online. I will ask, okay, if you want um, 
say crispy chicken? Would you like steamed rice? Would you like to have some vegetable? Um, this is, doesn't have to be an add-on, but it's a suggestion of complement dish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then people might as well just make the dish right there rather than scrolling down to the next page and looking, oh yeah, I need to have a main a vegetable. Mm -hmm. And then right after that would be, would you like an extra piece of chicken? Or would you like an extra vegetable on your dish? Um, um, so they have an option available and the flexibility of design their own meals for the family. Right. Okay. So they can turn an, uh, an entree into a main by just kind of adding extra things to it even. Yeah. yeah. And then at the end, you know, everyone, they know whether they want to drink or not, but still convenient just to have yeah. it right there. And then people can just add it on. So right. Even they were starting with entree of $9, but they probably already end up $40 just okay. in one step. Nice. <laughs> okay, now you've got um, here. This is the 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 um, the setup for. Yeah. Um, so Uber Eats, can you? Uh, sorry, Ken. Can you go back to the last show? That last this slide. No, the last one. The oh, one with one. the pie chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. this one here. So yeah. So for example, I put put it. No, the next one. That one. The one. Yep. So if we look at the number, this is how it works. So for me, the food takeaway was say 54%, but with drink add-on and combo, I managed to increase 5%. We all think 5% is nothing, but when, just for example, the turnover is 30,000 a week, mm -hmm. your 54% of takeaway is 16,000, right? And with the 5% extra at the bottom there, it's showing 1,500 weekly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that is just an add-on. So 1,500 for add-on extra over a year is about 65,000. Yeah, yeah. And 65,000, you know, this is a large amount of money that you can easily do it um, to offset your other costs. Just by tweaking the design, yeah. <laughs> giving them an option. So this could help you to reduce your commission of 30%, mm -hmm. reduce your, uh, you know, your rental. And this is a cheaper stop at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, how can you do everything that you can get the customer, get the perfect choice of menu selections and, you know, make a good deliver of the value for money dish with the packaging yeah. and they come back. So nice. over time they know, okay, I can add on this, add on this and believe it or not, the next time they actually get more add on and more add on. Oh, okay. So, so you're noticing a customer history, um, like that. This is so interesting. And when you can sort of see a complete customer, um, you know, transaction and then compare one and see, see how they change. Now I'll have to move quickly through some of these. Um, you've got the, this is the, the setup for um, Uber Eats, I think. Is that right? Yeah. So this is just to an example, illustrate with the uh, Uber. So say that is the spring roll. Mm -hmm. I have choice, which is no extra cost. And then I have an option. Would you like an extra? Because one serve is only three or four. Mm -hmm. If you have, you know, one person extra at home or you want an extra bit, then you can add on an extra unit. And uh, moving down, then you have, um, I think your screen cannot show that, right? So, um, so I have uh, add on with extra piece. And then I have extra side, whether you want steamed rice, you want a vermicelli noodle, or you uh -huh. want sauce to come with it um, because some people want more sauce some people want just to eat the right. entree so some the of rice. these are, are no charge extras and some of them are um, yep. extras you pay for right so just last to wrap up here you've got these numbers here this is what you're looking at all your extras over the course of um, which is the last 12 months is it now, this is only uh, the last three months. Just want to show how oh, okay. during a COVID time. Right. So, uh, same example here. So, this is the very basic item that sometimes as a restaurant or operator, we don't think that people need it. We just put the complete dish. Mm -hmm. But things like that we have available so much in the, in the restaurant, pasta, noodle, vermicelli, sauce, anything that you can just put it on as an extra, give them a lot of flexibility. Right. Uh, to build up for their own preference. For me, for example, if you look at extra vegetable, that is five serve per day over a month, 126. And then look down in the price, the vegetable is $5 each. So mm. over a year, 7,000 of the vegetable mm. extra, if you didn't offer 
you don't have the extra 7,000. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Emma, just interested, you know, you've got an Asian style menu here where we're used to, uh, well, I don't know what is actually that used to having extras, but certainly, all, you know, we get asked, do you want to have rice or do you want to have, you know, in an Indian restaurant, a naan bread or something like that. Yeah. I'm thinking for our, for our cafe or for our Western style yeah. Um, menu. This is the challenge, isn't it? To sort of no, it it still have a lot of option. I've been mm. in the cafe where they have extra egg, extra sauce, extra yeah. butter, extra yeah. gems, extra yeah. uh, upgrade of the bread to sardos. You know, different bread. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. They have, Interesting. have a lot more. Yeah. Uh, to add on, yeah. I think there's a good challenge for, for those restaurants, you know, the, the Western one or like the cafe where you think, oh, no, we don't do like that. Well, why not? Because when the, the figures you show, you know, $7,000 a year, $7,500 for extra vegetables, hey, let's make an effort. Let's find a way we can actually <laughs> sell more things. Yeah, Ken, the, the other thing I, I think like everyone should remember is don't, don't forget like the principles you mentioned earlier for the extras, don't just say extra egg. Say like extra poached free range egg or do you yes. know, like, yeah, don't yeah, say yeah. chili yes. sauce, house made, yeah. um, house made chili house made sauce, chili yeah. and tomato yeah, jam yeah, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, Sounds yeah, more yeah. Exciting. And really uh, uh, sometimes like, with the with that extra and the add on, if you can modify that to a different way of saying, it's also it's good. For example, in Uber, um, they let you change how you want to ask the extra. The way I ask is like. Could you like an extra egg? Could you like an extra spring roll? Mm -hmm. uh, some platform just kind of fix, so then you just have to use the word add on or extra. But when we read extra and add on, we feel like, oh no, a bit greedy. They're Maybe trying to sell ask, me. Like, in a different way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. No, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Jose, you got any yeah. other comments on this? No, no, no. I'm, I'm totally in, I'm in, in a big agreement with the add ons, which I'll. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice. But but uh, the subtlety of the wording too, and uh, Bronwyn's made a good comment. Works works great on breakfasts and add-ons. Bronwyn, you, maybe you'd like to let us know what it, what are some of the best-selling add-ons you do on your breakfast. I'm guessing you've got a a cafe there. Okay. Well, look, I'm going to keep moving because uh, time's tight. We're going a little bit over time, and uh, if you've got a busy schedule, by all means, uh, stick around. That would be great. But um, just thinking about, you know, this has just been awesome, uh, the feedback you've given, the information you've shared with us, Emma, and I'm sure lots of people will be diving onto your website and hopefully if they're in Sydney coming to visit as well. But, you know, what are some of the new rules uh, for menus? And certainly I've, just from talking to lots of people, everyone's kind of shrinking the menu a bit and making it a bit tighter. Um, you know, not as many wines, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, QR codes, um, I've given you a couple of examples here. I'm about to give you a couple more, but this is super simple and easy to do. Emma, have you got QR codes or are you planning that? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm in the process of uh, setting up that menu to show in a QR code. I mean, QR code is easy to have, but you want customer to see a good menu and order. Mm, yeah, when we, get, when we click on the QR code, it's got to take us somewhere that's really juicy and really appetizing. <laughs> yeah. So we've, well, I think with the message as well received, you know, lots of add-ons and what they, you know, in digital terms, we call modifiers. Uh, I like having a bit of uh, a nice, thank you, uh, Bronwyn, you've given us a few extras. Sounds delicious, I have some of those. Thank you. <laughs> um, another term that uh, retailers always use is the basket size. You know, how many actual items do people order? Now, in traditional cafe restaurant, we think of per head spend, you know, table of four, they spend uh, $80, that's $20 per head. But it's important to look at another number, this basket size as well. I think that's worth, worth thinking about. And of course, um, take great photos. Do, Emma, you use a professional or do you do some of the photos yourself? Uh, for the add-on? Uh, the, the photos, do, do you do your own photos or do you get a professional photographer? In? Um, yeah, I'm flexible. I mean, if the menu to print, then it would be professional one. But if I have special menu or social media, it would be just myself or staff can do it. Mm, good, yeah, phones are amazing what they can do now. now I'm just gonna drop a, uh, a photography service in the chat there. It's called Snapper. And it's kind of like Uber for photographers. And uh, when I've run a few events 
in the last 12 months when events were a thing. Uh, I used to need an event photographer and I'd book someone for two hours at really very inexpensive price. And I said, I want an event photographer, but I know they've got food photographers as well. So if you do want someone to come along um, and do it, it's worth exploring that. But your phone can be pretty amazing if you get some good lighting happening as well. Anything else that um, any of you would add as new rules for menu writing? Well, Anyone like I'll, to drop into the chat can, or? Ken, I, I was just gonna say, um, I think now now is probably also the time to experiment too. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, it's almost like customers seem a, a wee bit more forgiving or understanding. Um, so um, whether the experimentation is shrinking your menu um, mm -hmm. or, or just focusing on, you know, more veg vegetarian or, or, or seafood or something like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. that. Um, yeah. But not to hammer on on these add-ons, but you mentioned basket size, which is definitely a traditional, like, retail term mm -hmm. but e even if you think fundamentally like um every how many years have we been waiting at like Coles and Woolies with our shopping and they have all the chewing gum and the chocolate and stuff like that like that is to, at, at to the increase counter. yes at the counter that's yes. essentially what your add-ons and modifiers are it's just that little little bit yeah. extra like it, yes. it's actually the same concept but you just yeah. can't do it in a digital manner um, yeah, and 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 we, we are some very well not often enough. You'll see that at uh, takeaway food places where and a, a friend of ours, George, on uh, at Moody Chef in Sydney, he says you know his front counter is what he calls it yeah. waterfront real estate. It's like prime yeah. territory where you get that last sale for a little for yeah for a chocolate or a yeah. muffin or some little kind of impulse buy but he's 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 almost duplicated the retail thing because he also sells some mints and some you know chewing gum and stuff like that as yeah. well right? like yeah. it's, it's similar now i'm gonna have to keep moving here so tyrone you got this helicopter view um of you know what you're seeing with uh, your product Tab Square, you've given us a couple of examples here, very um, nice photography. And uh, But cool. just tell us what are some of the things that you're seeing the smart operators doing with taking you know, a digital menu and making it work much harder than a piece of paper? Um, well, I'll, I'll still one of your favorite terms, Ken, is, is, is take good photos. Um, so, um, pictures do sell a hundred percent and even GIF images. So an animated GIF, like from mm -hmm. the data we have is like, we, we add money. Like, you may be someone with the burger being built. Yeah. Sell or about, the sauce anyway, being poured onto yeah, the steak or something. Four yeah. to five times mm -hmm. more sales of that one item. Really? Um, wow. I, yeah, yeah. I guess one of, one of the things that, that kind of we do is, um, is, we have a little bit of an AI engine in the background that may may sound like a, a movie name, but essentially it just lets um, learns the preferences of the customer. So, as you were saying, is location is everything. Like, and it's the same digitally, whether it's on paper or not. It's it, it's mm -hmm. the same. Um, even more so on the phone, because if you've got a hundred items, people aren't going to scroll down to look at every burger. Mm -hmm. So if I'm if I'm vegetarian, I've hit burgers. I want to see the vegetarian burgers. First, yeah. Right. And yeah. Then even with the upsells, right? I'm vegetarian. Don't try and upsell me bacon on my vegetarian burger. Mm. Upsell me on like, you know, the marinated mushroom and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and wacky, wacky things exactly like this. So um, similar to what Emma was saying is if someone forgets to order a drink, well, why don't we should, we should try and sell them a drink. Right. And, mm. and we, you could do it the other way around. If they forgot to order spring rolls, we should go, hey, you only ordered fur. Why don't you get some spring rolls? It sounds great, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's that, it's that same kind, kind of thing. Um, I think on the right there, there's um, this is specifically for pizza, but it's the same thing. We'll yeah, you might want to just, um, everyone, just grab your phone and just hold your camera, open the camera app and just open over, over the QR code there and that'll open up. Tyrone's demo there's uh you can sort of pretend you're ordering and sort of see how this system yeah, works. Feel, Just... feel, feel free mm. um knock, knock yourself out um yeah. but you 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 definitely we've, we've definitely seen some some really good um increases in in 
whether whatever terminology we want to say, I've, I've said here uh, average transaction value, or you could say basket size. So on average, um, you see about a 12% increase by just being able to upsell mm. what people are like, what that person actually wants. So, and, and, and I think we've got to recognize that most of the white staff we've got in Australia, they don't sell. All right. Aussies weren't born with a selling gene. <laughs> I've often said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just give you the menu and you're ready to order. What do you want? You know, yeah. and we try and coach them and all the rest. And look, it's a joy when you do have someone who actually spends the time, but most times it's not going to happen. The menu has to do that work, the menu or the app. And then you'll get that result that you dream of and you're always frustrated that it doesn't seem to happen, the, the add-on, the extra. Um, yeah. Jose, let's, let's flip to your uh, insights. So you use Order Up, and um, Emma, I understand that's the, um, for your online ordering, you use Order Up as well. Yeah. So you've given us a few, Jose, you've given us some step throughs of, you know, like a typical um, at the Little Italy restaurant, mm -hmm. you know, click, 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 all looks pretty simple and straightforward. And you've got, um, and, and interestingly, you've got that last thing you might also like. Mm -hmm. um, dessert, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what, what is some of the observations you'd like to make, you know, after our, the different things we've been looking at so far? Well, I'm going to even um, I'll go as far as reiterate uh, Tyrone's slide on, on, on the stats. Uh, from what we've seen from traditional ordering versus getting a, uh, a menu digitally, in, in a digital form, sorry, that's not even a word, in a digital form, mm -hmm seen an, an increase of, of up to about 30%. So we've got about 1,500 restaurants all around Australia and the data we've seen, you can, it, it's proven that going from taking an order traditionally and then moving it into a digital form, you're going to increase your basket sizes and you're going to increase your frequencies. Mm -hmm. What we've seen further to that with, you know, we've got a lot of customers who still don't have images on, on their menus. We have a lot of customers who still don't have modifiers. What we do as a business is also coach them through this process because what we've seen, and this is, this is, this is a, a real live case study. We had a cafe four weeks ago who had our solution, the order up solution. So it was a digital menu, but it didn't have modifiers and it didn't have images. In four weeks, he grew his basket size by 10%. Mm. Just by adding images and the opportunity to get the customer to modify their own dish. It's, just, it's, it's, it's not about uh, forcing anything onto them. It's really just about um, giving them that option. I know myself, when I go out to eat restaurants, I love to add extra things on because that's mm -hmm. the way I like to eat. That's the way I grew up. I don't, I, I find it disappointing when you go to a restaurant and you don't even get the option to do that. You know what I mean? So that concept, I think now moving into the digital age is a lot easier to do now. Um, and again, with a digital menu, you can change the descriptions, you can change the pricing, you can change the menu as often as you want. So outside of your design brief around descriptive words, the next level up is imagery. I know also when I go to a restaurant, mm -hmm. I look at everyone's plate till I sit down so I can- I want what she's having. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. I mean, it's taking, I mean, everyday mannerisms and trying yeah. to do that digital thing. Uh -huh. Nice, nice example. Yeah, now I'm very conscious of the time. I'm just gonna to have to flip through um, a last, just a couple of reminders, really. Um, look, in my cafe days, I made so much money from desserts. I have a bit of a sweet tooth, but we, the more we made, the more we sold. And I just think it can be a massive opportunity. And that's the formula, folks, that line one, sugar and air and water. Now add a bit of chocolate, maybe add a few strawberries or something like that. But, you know, this is a great way to make money and build that basket size. And sometimes we do see people have got their menus, their dessert menu, but it's not, not the range. You know, we want um, the uh, desserts where people can share something that can be shareable and maybe you don't feel guilty, you know, so that word light or I don't know about low fat, but you know, some of those things, something fruity certainly is going to be a bit less guilty, almost healthy. Is that the word? Anyway, <laughs> and um, using your own descriptions, my place was called Cafe Troppo and you know, we'd have Troppo Trifle and Troppo this and Troppo Burgers and all the rest. No comparison is important, I think. And that strike rate, um, a term that's worth looking. We had a hundred customers last night and 18 of them ordered desserts. Our strike rate is 18%. What do you reckon? Good, bad? 
I reckon it's pretty bad. Yeah. So how could you improve? Because once we know the numbers, then we'll work on doing better. Can, can if, yeah. if I can just, also on desserts, especially for online orders, I think drinks almost fall into that same dessert category okay. where, where yeah, drinks exactly. always seem mm -hmm. to be a for, the forgotten thing. Whereas yes. like, Whereas we're in venue, we, we want to sell, we want to sell drinks because like, there's yeah. great margin. Uh -huh. it's probably interesting, always, interesting. always remember online. Like, yeah. Now my very last one is just uh, I'll come back to our our friendly staff and yes they they're coachable. Yes they can do better. It's just about drilling and you know over and over and reminding them and just so that they don't even hear about. But they need to talk about what their favourite is, what our best seller is and what everyone loves and reassure them it's not too hot and all those kind of things. And you've probably got a few other lines here as well, but don't give up on that. Um, but there's, there's definitely things to do. And look, Instagram is a menu as well, isn't it? One item. And just a reminder, I um, hope you've upgraded your Instagram account to have business features because you can have people clicking through the menus and clicking through to do the ordering and all those kind of things as well. Anyway, um, we come to the end of our webinar today. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for my three awesome guests for uh, contributing. Thanks for having us, Ken. Been Thank really you. Great. Thank you Thanks for your uh, openness and sharing the inside information. Thanks, Tyrone and Jose, for your insights too. Oh, wow. And uh, you've got awesome products there as well. And thanks for all our guests. Thanks for lots of lots of uh, comments you made. And don't forget that offer if you want me to have a look at your menu, just um, whether you drop it into the chat now or whether you send me an email, um, just reply to the uh, your confirmation email you got for the webinar and happy to have a look at your menu and have a chat with you about it. All right, it's time for us to head off now. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks time. We'll have our next webinar. It's going to be a good one. Uh, three smart operators talking about what they do. So we'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay, folks, we're offline. Or are we? Actually, I don't know. We're, no, we're not quite yep. offline yet. We just say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> but thanks, everyone. Really fantastic. Thank yeah, you, Ken. You can keep driving now. <laughs> yeah. Now is the school's on. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. So Cheers. Bye, Ken. Bye.